Hey y'all. Um, my name is Neon. Um, welcome to Neon's Movie Reviews. Um, today I am uh, going to be talking about a movie that I was really kind of dreading watching. Um, a couple weeks ago I watched the original Suspiria, Dario Argento film, uh, for the first time. Heard a lot of, a lot of great stuff about it. I understand the technical aspects, I thought those were fantastic, but the overall film and my personal enjoyment of this film did not exist. Um, I, it, it was, it, it's probably a film that I will grow to enjoy over rewatch or rewatch, um, but honestly, just from that initial viewing, it was a film that I never thought I would ever watch again. Um, but before I had watched that, I had picked up the remake as well. Uh, so last night I decided to watch the remake. And uh, I gotta say, this, <laughs> this film basically did everything that I wanted the original to do. Um, I wanted a great character driven story I wanted to know more about the organization I didn't just want scene to random scene to random dream sequence like death back to back to random scene you know, this is a, it's a fucking dance school there's no there's one scene of dancing in the original one but in for a film that takes place in a dance school about dance students one, one dance, um, and the remake, <laughs> like, there's, there are some brief spoilers here f that I don't, the way this film presents everything, they're not spoilers, um, but in, in the original, you're not sure what the hell is going on the entire film. There's hints you hear in the in the uh, soundtrack that there every once in a while you'll hear the uh, witch, um, but it's they never really come out and say it until the last act, and by then, you know she's already facing down the 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 lead witch and you know stabs her in the neck, takes her out. Whole building starts starts lighting on fire. Characters' st heads are like swelling up, and whole place everybody dies. Place burns up, and immediately the credits roll. And it's just like, oh, okay. Just as we began getting into the the substance of the story, you you killed everything that was in it, and just it was over. So this film, right off the bat, in less than five minutes. You, you're told about the witches, and immediately after that, you go right into the, the organization. And it's it's about the witches. It's about how they do their magic, the the, the hierarchy in their uh, in their organization. How like that's what this film is about. And they the music school uh, or the the dance school they they bring in dancers so that they can. Uh, perform the rituals. The, the dancing is how they do their magic, and it's oh, it's so good. It's so good. The the it's, it's just it was one of those things. That in the original, I was just like, what the fuck. And in this one, I was just like, yes, yes. Why, why did we not have that before? Like, how is that? How in a film about dancing, do we not have much dancing? And in this one, it was just like, no. We're telling a story about witches in a dance school. Dancing's how they perform their magic. That's what you need to know. And there it's basically them um, cultivating this this new young girl who's just uh, she's an American. It's yeah, you know, it's the same basic setup. You know, American comes to uh, Berlin to join this dance academy. Uh, things start going weird, and oh, it turns out this school is run by witches. That's, as weirdly as it is, that's a brief synopsis for this current, for the, the, the remake, whereas for the original, that's the entire movie. Like, the only thing I didn't mention is there's some deaths in the original. Like, without, like, 
that come that is the whole movie you, there's no plot twist there's there's nothing of substance in the original outside of the the technical achievements that they per, pulled off um but yeah so this this remake they you've got the uh you've got just the same story but it's just every chance they can they develop it they they explore things about this organization they explore things about this character and where she comes from the the head the 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 inner politics of the organization the like it's just everything is so well developed uh you've got tilda swinton in um three roles in this film um she plays what one of them i'm not gonna i'm not gonna spoil but she plays the uh the uh um Madame, uh, Madame Blanc, uh, she's basically the one of the heads of the organization. She's the main one that teaches everybody, kind of cultivates all of them. Um, but, and then there is her opposite, um, Mother Marcos, uh, or Madame Marcos. Um, and it's, those two are kind of button heads, and that's how the story develops. Um, but... You got her in that role, and then she is also playing this like sixty or seventy year old man that um, gets pulled into the storyline, and he's doing his own little investigation. He's basically Udo Kier's character in the original, um, and for me, I I knew going in that that was Tilda Swinton. Fooled me, like I knew, but I never once like there was a few times where. It would come up because I was thinking about it, and it was just like, how in the hell is that Tilda Swinton? This makeup is incredible. Um, I've heard complaints about her eyes that you can easily tell it's her just from the eyes, and it's just like, well, eyes kind of give away anybody. Um, but for me, it was it was not jarring at all. I found it really unique and refreshing, and they. They went to some lengths to make me question if if that was Tilda Swinton, um, but yeah, this and the so this film the, so the the three praises of the original in my opinion are the crazy nightmare death scenes those go down in history as some of the most original horror kills of all time all of them they're they're all great. Um, You've got the Goblin sc- soundtrack or score, whatever you call it. Um, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, and then you've got the the beautiful color contrast in that film. Um, in this film, you don't get those crazy nightmare death sequences. But what you get is a thousand times more disturbing and more uncomfortable to ex- watch. Um, like there, there is a scene that I don't, I don't cringe. I don't, I don't look away in movies. And this, this scene was very tough for me to watch. I, I'm not saying it like made me want to turn the movie off or anything like that. Um, but it, it was a scene. And I'm not gonna spoil it, but it, it was a scene that just it touched all the right nerves for me in, in terms of horror. That it was just like good god we're just going with this and they stay with it for a while it it wears out as his welcome let me put it that way not not as a negative critique but you do not want to keep watching this it's so uncomfortable to experience and then the way they they end it is just oh god um yeah no it's some very, very uncomfortable death scenes uh, that are going to stay with you for a while. Um, the score is done uh, done by... Oh, I've been listening to the score all day. It's... Ah, uh, Tom... Tom Waits? No... Oh, man, this is going to piss... Oh, this is going to upset me. All right. Um, 
It's Tom somebody. Uh, I I was never I was not familiar with him. And I I apologize. I I will put the name in in, uh, in the subtitles um, uh, over this, but um, I was not expecting anything out of the score. I was honestly expecting this film to kind of have an extremely restrained score because Goblins was so memorable. And this film, it it is restrained, but it's not at the same time. Um, and I'm, I'm somebody that does pay attention to a lot of, uh, of film scores. Like, I'll, I'll be watching a movie, and if I notice the score, it's because it's a really good score. Um, and there are certain composers that I have an ear for that, and I don't mean that, like, I like their stuff. I mean, I can recognize that it's them just by hearing it and no, and by re realizing that I'm enjoying the music that I'm listening to and that I'm actively noticing the music. Usually in those cases, I can just be like, oh, okay, well, how is the music done? How does it feel? Okay, that's probably this guy then. Look it up. Oh, yeah, it was. Um... I've, I've got like there's like two people on that list, so it's always it's always nice when it happens. Um, but yeah, this film it puts a third person on that list. Um, and I'm so upset. I know the moment I'm done filming, the name's gonna come to me. And I'm gonna be like fuck. But um, yeah, this score is great, and it's actual music. It's not just a score. It's actual songs that are performed, um, and they they tie into the story. They tie into the feel very well. It's it. I I think that I it is probably controversial, but I prefer the the remake score over the Goblin score. Um, and uh, and then you've got you know you in the original. This is something that they did very differently. Um, almost to the point of, like, the difference between, um, you know, the lack of substance in the original versus this film, all substance, um, and in the same regard, the other one was, didn't have any substance, but it was all crazy contrasts and colors and visuals, and this one, this one's very drab, it's, it's not dark, it's not grimy or anything like that. It, it looks gorgeous, the, the, the cinematography is very unique. There is color, but it's very muted. It's, I don't even wanna say muted. It's, it doesn't feel like you're stepping into a fairy tale. It doesn't feel like you've stepped into the, the stained glass world that the original Suspiria felt like. It feels like this is the real world. Um, and the whole film goes to great lengths. Uh, what was showing the the struggle in divided Berlin at the time. It's it's do a really good job of just making the story feel real to the point that you you know they're witches, but so what? They're witches. Like you just accept it because the world that they exist in is so lived in and they are so well developed that you just accept it. And that, that was amazing for me. Um, the, the, I do really enjoy the cinematography in this. I think it's really, there, there's some shots that were done with some zooms and, and kind of, uh, whip pans that I just almost like, think like a Edgar Wright style zoom or something like that, but in like an Arias, Ariaster film, like Hereditary or something, like pair those styles. And that's kind of what you have with this film. It's, it's really unique in certain shots. And you always feel the presence of the other witches. You, you feel like the school is a, like this building is a character, always feels alive and, uh, yeah, I, I was I was at the edge of my seat the entire film. Um, or the opening the opening words of the film, like the the very first thing I see is the production studios, and then presents six acts and an epilogue set in divided Berlin. That's my title screen. I don't get the title of the movie. I get that. I was immediately just like six acts. What? What? I have a six act film with an epilogue. How, what? And 
from that point, I paused the movie, looked at the runtime, this was like, oh, this this is a two and a half hour movie. This is an hour longer than the original. I'm on board. Let's do this. Uh, I started playing, and it's it's a six act structure with an epilogue, and you it's set in divide Berlin, and that's what makes this film just stand out for me. Um, I, I highly praise this film, if you can't tell. Uh, for me, this was a 9 out of 10. Um, this was so close to perfection for me. There was some just slight little things that, for me, took this film down a peg. Um, not a full peg, um, but there it, it's not enough for me to put it at that perfect 10 out of 10. Um, but it, yeah, I... Go out and see this movie. Um, if you, I, 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 apparently this film is it's a controversial opinion. Like it's not that it's not like the people that didn't like Hereditary or Babadook or those like the A twenty four films. Those films are divided because critics love them because they're they're technic they're 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 technical wonders. They're technically great horror films, but they're not made for the mass population. As population goes to a horror movie, wants jump scares and loud noises and fun and excitement. They want a they want a fucking slasher or like a Conjuring movie. And even Conjuring is way better than what they want. Um, like they want cheap scares. They want fun. They want a popcorn movie. They don't want something that's actually gonna fucking make them think and disturb them. And for me, that's what Suspiria was. It falls in that same camp as Hereditary and all the other A twenty four films. But this film is more controversial than those because even people that like those types of movies fucking hate this movie. And I don't know if that's because of their bias towards it due to their love of the original. I don't know if it's because the, the film offends them. Um, I guess for some it could be seen as like a feminist movie. I never got that vibe. I mean... It is this about witches, so I mean, I I guess, but it just it was a it it was never indulgent in that. It was never anything like, oh, shame on men, shame on this. No, it was just this is a story about witches. It's all, all women characters. That's just the story that's being told. Um, never got any f f feminist vibes. It was it was about strong women. Um, but I never felt like there was a political message. It was just, here's a film that is trying to just be unique and tell a story about these characters in this time period dealing with all these issues. And uh, I, I want to talk more about this, but it's all spoilers. And this is, this is a film that I think you should just see, um, regardless of if you don't like it. I think you should just see it. If you don't like the original, highly recommend you watch this movie. If you've seen the original, give this one a shot and and just don't expect the original. Expect the basically look at the original as like the base outline, and then hey, we're actually gonna fill in these spots where there's nothing going on. Um, but yeah, great performances all around. Um, the, the the main actress, uh, D Dakota Johnson, she's fucking fantastic in this film. Um, I was not familiar with her before I saw this movie. I looked her up. I guess she's the, the Fifty Shades girl. Um, she needs to get take more roles like this because uh, this, this made me notice her. And I'm going to be seeking out other works of hers. I believe she's in the Bad Times at the El Royale. So definitely got to check that one out. I've been wanting to check that one out for a while regardless. But the fact that she's part of that cast as well, it just just took me over the edge. Like that's one of those those next films I need to pick up. But uh, yeah, just go fucking see this movie. It's fucking great. Um, Nine out of 10. This is the Suspiria 2018. Um, but yeah, that's, that's going to wrap this up guys. Um, I've, I've got a lot more reviews lined up. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, if, if, if you did enjoy this content, please give this video a like, um, subscribe for more content if you are enjoying this and, um, 
you know, if you have seen this or if you've seen the original, let me know what you thought of them. Let me know what you thought was better. Um, let me know if you thought they were on par, like you like aspects of one versus the other, but you enjoy them both separately. Let me know. Like, I really want to talk to you guys about this film um, and, and, to the, and the original to an extent. Um, as I said in the beginning of this, this watching the remake made me want to give the original another shot. And uh, for, for how strongly I felt against that film, I, that, that for me is praise enough. But um, that's going to wrap it up, everybody. Uh, thank, thank you for watching this. I, I really do appreciate it. And um, please, please be, be safe out there.